Say something. What do you want me to say? Something. Anything. Just... You give me the shivers just standing there looking at me like that. Even now, after this, there's nothing we have to talk to Don't each other about? Don't talk to me like that. You talked enough like that when you were alive. It is not my fault that you're dead. No. You never talk to me. You look at me as if I'm always in your way. Martha. Martha, what's the difference now? I just wanted to let you know. So, what are you going to do? Are you just going to sit around here and ruin the rest of my life? I'm not going to come back anymore. Then what? I can't explain it to you, Martha. No, no. You couldn't explain it to your wife. But I bet that you could explain it to those dirty bunch of loafers down at that saloon on F Street or down at that damn garage of yours. I guess I could. It was clearer then, when I was talking to the boys while working over a job. And I could manage to talk so people would understand me down at that saloon on F Street. It was nice, standing there of a Saturday with, with a beer in my hand, two boys on my side who could understand my language, talking, oh, about Babe Ruth or the new oiling system Ford was putting out or the war. I could understand if you had a beautiful life that you wanted to go back to. That I could understand. But you were poor. You, you never had anything to your name. You had dirt under your nails. You never ate enough. You hated me. Your wife. You couldn't even stand to be in the same room as me. Don't you turn away from me like that. I know it. Even if you don't say it. The only thing that you could remember that was good out of an entire life was a couple of beers you drank on a Saturday night with a bunch of bums. That's enough. I didn't think about it then. But I guess I was happy those times. <laughs> happy? You were happy then, but never in your own home. Well, I wasn't happy either. I, I hated living in three damn rooms. The sun never touched five times a year watching the roaches make a picnic out of the walls. Happy. I did my best. Eighteen fifty a week. Your best? Eighteen fifty condensed milk, two dollar pair of shoes, five hundred dollar insurance, being scared stiff of, of everybody and everything, uh, of the landlord, of the gas company, being terrified every month that I was going to have a baby. Why shouldn't I have a baby? Other people have babies. 1850 a week and no baby. I would have liked a kid. You would. You never said anything. It's good to have a kid. A kid's somebody to talk to. At first, I thought we would have a kid someday. Yeah, me too. On Sundays I used to go and watch men wheel their kids to the park. There's so much you never told me. Why didn't you just say something? I was too ashamed. I couldn't give you anything. I'm sorry? All seemed fine in the beginning. I used to smile when we would walk down the street and other men would look at you. That was a long time ago. A 
kid would have helped. No. It wouldn't. Don't fool yourself, Webster. The Clarks downstairs have four kids, and Mr. Clark still comes home every night and beats them with a shaving strap and throws plates at the old lady. No. Kids don't help the poor. Nothing helps the poor. I'm too smart to have sick, dirty kids on 1850 a month. <laughs> That's it. A house should have a baby. It, it doesn't have to be a clean house with a full ice box. Other people are having babies even now with the war. Why shouldn't I have a baby? They, they don't have to cringe every time they tear a page off of the calendar. They go off to lovely hospitals and beautiful ambulances and have babies between colored sheets. What is it about them that God likes them so much that he lets them have babies? They're not married to mechanics. No. They're not. It's not 1850 a week for them. And now it's worse. You're $20 a month. You go off and you get yourself killed and I get $20. I stand in line all day waiting for a piece of bread. I've forgotten what butter tastes like. I, I stand in line all day in the pouring rain soaking through my shoes waiting for a piece of rotten meat once a week. I go home and there's nobody there. I just sit and I watch the bugs in the wall with one little light because the government's trying to save on electricity. What's the word in me that I have to sit by myself with nobody to talk to? What's the word in you that you had to go off and get yourself killed? That's why I'm standing up now, Martha. Why now? Why not a year ago? Why not five years ago? Why not ten years ago? You lived in the poorhouse all of your life with the dirt and the roaches and you never said a word. And then you go and you get yourself killed and you decide now is the time to stand up. I didn't realize it then. You fool. You fool! That is just like you, to wait until it's too late, to wait till all the other lying men are gone. Well, it's about time you talk back. It's about time you and all the other 1850-week bastards started staying up for their wives and their children.